Welcome to the Homeschool Mama Self-Care Podcast. If you are a homeschool mama challenged by doubt, not sure if you can do this homeschool thing, if you are a homeschool mama challenged by overwhelm, there are just too many things to do, or if you are a homeschool mama looking for connection and encouragement, then this is the podcast for you. I'm Teresa Wiedrich from CapturingTheCharmedLife.com, and I'm here to encourage you in your homeschool journey. So let's turn our homeschool challenges into our homeschool charms. Today, I get to introduce you to Maren and Angela, the creators and hosts of the Homeschool Unrefined podcast. They've been friends for more than 20 years. They've survived a lot of Minnesota winters together, as well as college and grad school, full-time teaching, giving birth within days of each other twice, and now as homeschoolers and podcasters. Angela says if you see her at Target, it's probably not her because she likes to order everything online so she can hang out at home with her husband and three kids. And Maren says give her all the adventures and all the brainstorming sessions. She's an entrepreneur married to an entrepreneur. They have four kids, had them in four years yes, twins, and now that everyone's out of the diapers, she's pretty sure she can handle anything that comes her way. So welcome, Marin and Angela. Welcome to my closet. I can see that you are both in your closets. So we are homeschool mom podcasters. And where are the kids? I got to know. (laughs) Exactly. I've got one kid making lunch and one doing some gaming and one at school. That sounds about right. <laughs> I had all kids making lunch, and so I had to move. Oh, yeah. I hear, I could hear people. Well, I'm so glad you ladies are here. For all of yeah, the, uh, my homeschool community, would you share just a little bit about what your homeschool community is, and also a little bit about your family, how you came to homeschooling, so everybody gets to know a little bit about you? Sure. Go ahead, Maren. Okay. We are Homeschool Unrefined, and we have a podcast where we keep homeschool simple, real, and fun. And we started the podcast uh, four and a half years ago, really out of um, desperation, right, Angela? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) We really wanted a community of people who were supporting each other to feel good about what we were doing and um, to not feel pressure to do more and better and strive and strive and strive and um, always one up each other. We just didn't, we weren't, didn't want that kind of, you know, that kind of pressure. And we knew that kids could learn in a much more relaxed and, um, safe and comfortable environment where they felt like they were being heard. And so we really wanted to create that community. And we, that's what, that's what we've been working on for the last four and a half years. Well, I have a lot of fun listening to you. In oh, fact, good. <laughs> With regularity, I can pull up all sorts of podcast episodes that, you know, I am like, okay, which one do we talk about? Because the one that I listened to today is about YouTube and creating it as a curriculum or using it as a Mm -hmm. curriculum and thinking outside of this is just a screen and it's just educate or entertainment, but it's actually educational. So you have a bunch of um, science and history um, options, I guess, that you have used yourself. And I found that really useful. Yeah. Good. Yes. Thank you. That's, that's one thing we really kind of want to debunk, do debunk myths about, you know, that um, screens are always bad. They're not. And so we want to use them in, in good ways. Um, And we do, we use them a lot. So, yeah. (laughs) So Angela, tell me about your homeschool experience. Where did you start homeschooling? Yeah. What's your story? Yeah. Okay. So I was a, um, you know, accidental homeschooler, I would say I never wanted to homeschool. I I, um, didn't even really think about it. Marn and I both were public school teachers. And so I always really cared about education and kids and all of that. But I never really considered homeschool until my oldest was going into first grade. (laughs) Um, She's now 16. And so it has been 10 years, I think, since we've been homeschooling. This is our 10th year, I think. Um, And, uh, you know, I just, you know, noticed how well she, how well she was learning at home 
And I also knew about the pressures of school. And I knew about how that, um, that could make your life like really busy. And I'm an introvert. I like um, staying home. <laughs> Like, so this year has been good for you. <laughs> yeah. So this is a good, like, uh, it's a good lifestyle. Um, but also I wanted her to uh, not have the pressures of school. And I noticed that um, early on for her. And so I thought, well, we'll just try it. And so we've been doing that ever since now she's um, in a public high school the mm-hmm. past two years she's doing that, but I have my younger two are 14 and 12 and they are home too. And I, um, I like as the parent, I love this lifestyle. I love it. Like I love having my kids home. I love doing stuff together. Um, I love being with them all the time. I love um, just being in it with them and knowing like more about how they're learning. It's just, it's awesome. They are getting older and um, you know, wanting to separate naturally. Mm -hmm. Like That's a natural thing. And so like, I'm trying to go into this new phase of parenting and homeschooling, keeping all that in mind, you know, it's not a lot of like read aloud snuggled on the couch anymore, which is hard, but um, it looks different. And I am trying to embrace all that. (laughs) Um, But I still like mostly love how, well, there's so many things, but I love how it um, takes pressure off of us to homeschool. And I feel like I can breathe and I feel Mm -hmm. less, less busy, Mm -hmm. less busy. So absolutely. Yeah. So Marin, would yeah. you also share with me a little bit about your story? Sure. Mine might be a little bit similar to Angela's. I think, well, well, I think one thing that really struck me when my kids were younger, even before school age was I was feeling some anxiety about even, yeah, about even starting school because I felt like there was so much learning happening at home. And, um, I did notice that I have kids who I think are differently wired. I thought at the time, I think I just have this nudge this inkling that my kids are your different learners and i and i knew as a school teacher that it might be tricky for them to to learn in that way at school um and so i thought i either have to do lots of research and find you know the right school for them that would be you know really flexible and willing to work with them or um or i started thinking about homeschooling and so um the, the, the older they got, the more I was like, this is going to be harder and harder to let them, you know, go to school. And we'd have to, I mean, it would be a full-time job to kind of just even figuring out how to make learning work for them at school. And I thought I'd rather have just less stress right now and mm-hmm. we'll see where this goes. And so we started, we decided to homeschool and it, um, it just has grown into continuing the homeschool mm-hmm. <laughs> cause that's what's working for us. And our kids are now we, you know, we've had testing and we, we know confirmed they are differently wired. They are learning differently. Um, and they get to now, um, learn, about themselves and how they learn and kind of advocate for themselves. They advocate to me every day. I need to do this. This is what, this is what works for me. And um, so we, I think they just feel uh, more empowered. Mm -hmm. Um, Definitely like they're absolutely motivated to do work and get things done and learn. Um, But they're figuring out how to do that for themselves. Um, And hopefully this is something that will continue throughout their lives. Like I think in this, in this scenario, they're learning how to um, go to college. Like how, how are they going to add for advocate for themselves when they go to college or when, what about when they find, you know, or how to even find a job that's going to work well for them. And then when they get a job or, you know, start a business or whatever, how is this going to work for them? Um, for the rest of their lives. So mm-hmm. hopefully that's what's happening. You know, these roots are starting right now. Um, they will. That. And it's amazing how quickly it happens. Cause I was, I brought my first daughter to kindergarten. She went to the end of grade two, mm-hmm. but I was in a puddle of tears mm-hmm. at the first day of kindergarten. She was fine. <laughs> she yeah. was like, yeah, yeah. that's the problem. I'm good. <laughs> but then having to go back and forth to the school, just like both of you have said, there was mm-hmm. just a lot of what felt like to me busy work that I was mm-hmm. going back and forth to the school to do, you know, soup and cracker night, which was cute, of course, right. but right. it was also a lot of work and I was doing soup and cracker every day. And, and so we go back and forth and I had two other little kids at home and I'm thinking, why am I bringing 
this child back and forth so she can learn her <laughs> alphabet in ASL. And, and then it dawned on me. Well, it didn't dawn on me. Actually, I remember hearing a bunch of people say they wanted a homeschool. And I thought, you're nuts. That is not my kind of thing. I'm a mainstream kind of gal. And that sounds like a lot of work. So mm-hmm. I can't do that. And I'm definitely not patient enough, which is true. Mm. And, and then I discovered <laughs> uh, a book and that book actually convinced me after reading it mm. or a book, I was trying to get my arguments against it and then realized it was actually a really ideal approach to living and, you know, family life. But what book was that? I'm just uh, curious. Homeschool Option by Lisa Rivera. Oh, okay. I've not yeah, heard really of good book. Obviously it convinced me yeah. and my husband, but then, you know, fast forward, my oldest is now 20. And just like you said, wow. it goes fast. It really does go fast. Yeah. Um, yeah all the attitudes and approaches to learning and really to independence and to, you know, advocating for yourself as a child, it really does get cemented in there. And then they really do do those independent kind of approaches when they're older. I'll just say older. That's awesome. Yeah. It's good to hear from people who are just a little bit ahead too. Me too. You know, who say, yeah, that that does work. Keep, keep going. It really does work. Your approach to different things. In fact, one of the podcast episodes that you chatted about or that I really, really love to hear, and I bet you can guess what it is, but is the permission to cancel school. Yeah. Because I'm with you. I have never felt this level of um, inertia in a Mm. year before because Mm -hmm. it feels like we've been doing the same old, same old groundhog routine since last, I think it was March 13th for us or March 11th. Yeah. Yeah. And so way back then, and it feels like very similar, similar energy. And I'm done. I think January, (laughs) I was like, I'm done, but it's okay. Cause I truly ascribe to self-directed learning and it has challenged my sense of it's okay. Let it go. So I love hearing. And if you, if we really believe that kids are learning all the time, that their brains really are turning and they're working all the time. Um, if we have faith in our kids that that's happening, um, then th- the stress kind of can go, you know, we can let go of that stress of getting through curriculum yeah. um, because learning happens all the time. If they're without us. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Although I think it, the hard the hard thing is though so many people think that or like they they believe that sort of but yeah, then when yeah. it comes down to it they just feel guilty and they feel like well we've been in this you know pandemic with this weird right. year for so long and my kids aren't learning anything like right, they're right. not motivated to do the academics that they think that their children should be motivated to do and so they feel this extra pressure, not like just a pressure of a regular year, but like an extra pressure. Like we haven't done much this year, like, like at we all need to work harder. Yeah, <laughs> we, need to, we need to work harder. We need to make up for it. You know, yeah. public yeah. schools are talking about summer school, like we need to make up for this last year. And so mm-hmm. I think it's really hard. It's really hard to be that person mm-hmm. who says, no, I'm going to do it differently. I'm going to stick with what I know is true. And I'm going to um, give them the space to breathe, to grieve, Mm -hmm. to work on their mental health, whatever they are to play, you know, to do all the things that their body naturally needs to do. I'm going to, I'm going to trust that process. I think it's really hard to be that person when you have like these outside factors who are telling you your kids aren't doing enough. Yeah. And I do get that. I think that me as, um, uh, you know, I've been doing this for a while, me telling someone just relax is a reality um, that we actually have to really observe our kids and recognize that what they're doing right now is actually a learning opportunity. And I also write it all down and I don't need to do it anymore, but I used to do it for the sake of me looking at the Mm -hmm. end of the year, recognizing that yes, those 82 books, even though they're bored around their small books, those books that my son is reading, that was learning. Mm -hmm. Even the Harry Potter, but I'm not specifically speaking to Harry Potter, but you know, all sorts of um, different books or else, like you said, YouTube videos, when you write them down and you say, Oh, look at that history and that science or the current affairs or whatever, then you identify that they are learning. There are there are a bajillion ways to look at learning or measure learning outside of a test and a school approach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when, if, if our kids aren't um, being, don't have the opportunity to kind of like process the stress that's going on in our lives or, you know, even just get out in nature and decompress or, 
you know, do something that's good for their mental health and emotional health. Um, it's really, really hard to push them in any other direction that they may not want to go. Like there are things we've done this year, you know, curriculum wise that my kids, you know, don't love, but we did. Mm -hmm. But, um, that was like in between most, of uh, uh, self-directed learning, <laughs> you know, and then every once in a while I could, you know, um, insert something that I really yes. wanted to do with them. Yeah. I do that, that too. Yeah. And that, but that can only happen. That learning can only happen in that instance. If they've had that time to process, think on their own, uh -huh. feel their feelings and, uh, you know, do the things they love to do. And then even then now here we are in, in April and there are things that even now I'm like, I got to cut down even more, uh -huh. <laughs> even exactly. more, or just be done with, um, you know, even in this is like, I feel like they're kind of best case scenario. Um, we might be done now with a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, just this morning, I, there's one book that I've given my son and I said, I really want you to read this. And he's like, mm -hmm. it's so boring mom, <laughs> but every one of my kids have done it. It's partly rite of passage, but also mm -hmm. it's Sean, I think Sean Covey's seven habits of a highly effective teenager or something. Oh, cool. And it is such a good book. I'm like, sorry, but you're unschooling stuff with this book. <laughs> right, and, right. And you have so much freedom anyway. But we're talking, he's really upset with me this morning because he doesn't want to do this book. And I'm like, okay, I get it. You don't want to do this book. So all I want to hear is that you read this very small passage and let's just have a quick conversation about it and we'll move on. And so he says, um, angrily, it says to be proactive, not reactive. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's reminding me also in the moment to be proactive, not mm -hmm. reactive. Yeah. <laughs> we had a very abbreviated conversation about that. But I'm with you in the, I sprinkle it in very lightly. And then I really try to encourage all of the other stuff mm -hmm. all of the learning stuff they naturally pursue because I believe there is no academic emergency we don't need to push stuff on kids they will learn if we provide them an environment and relax but easy for me to say because I've been done that <laughs> right yeah. right so true though so you guys talk a lot about mental health for good reason, because mm -hmm. this year has been a lot. And so we're talking about this, un, you know, self-directed learning approach in a year where there is just a lot going on. And so what are your approaches or your advice to homeschool parents and how do you manage this at home? Because I know you're real homeschool moms and you will actually tell me like it is and say mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> some days, what is the advice? I don't know what the advice is, but what's your first thought? You know, uh, this is so multi-layered, and I just have to say, like, I don't know that I'm doing this right. So, I mean, whatever I say now, just just know that you know, <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm in it too, and I'm um, um, questioning how I'm handling things. And so, I'm, this is my first time having kids this age. This is my first time living through a pandemic. So, but. I think the first thing I think about is like, I really want to just listen to my kids. So if they are um, like having trouble with something, if they uh, are pushing back on something, if they are um, having trouble with friends, mm -hmm. if they are having trouble sleeping or whatever, whatever they're telling me through their words or actions, I want to make the priority. I just do. I think that's the most important thing right now. And so like, really what that means is like the thing, the academic things that might be my priority mm -hmm. are not going to make that list. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, maybe we, it, it really just depends on the kids, but maybe one kid needs, you know, more sleep and I need to be okay with that. Maybe one kid, like I need to help one kid, um, like eat nutritious meals and like help them to figure out how they're going to make those meals during the day. Maybe, um, one kid needs therapy. Maybe I need therapy, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, maybe we need to make some doctor appointments. Maybe I've really also prioritized like getting outside every day. Now, you know, we live in Minnesota. The weather has not been great. It's not always fun to get outside. I mean, that's an understatement. It, mm -hmm. It's like, you have to make yourself because, you know, it's good for you. It's like eating your vegetables. Like, you know, it's good for you and it feels good when you're out there, but like when you're in this cozy house and it's raining or gray or 
freezing cold, it's really hard to make yourself do that. So, but I've been making us because I know that we all feel better after that. And so those are the kinds of things that really, truly are the priority. Um, they, they, they truly are the most important. And then the academic things like math and reading and writing and whatever, those things still can happen. They don't always happen every day. They don't happen for a very long time. But, um, and if somebody is pushing back on it, like if they're, if there's any, I think Julie Bogart says, like, if there are any tears, you know, if there's any fighting, if there's any, like, you know, conflict about a subject, just stop it and just do it the next day. There, like you just said, there's not an, there's no emergencies here. This is just, um, this can happen again tomorrow. It can happen next year. What's most important right now is our like mental health and our stress level and making sure that we are healthy as, as we can be physically and mentally, emotionally. And it's such a challenge Mm -hmm. to do that. So what would you say, Maren? Yeah, I was, you know, I reiterate everything that Angela says. I think that, you know, on our podcast, we've talked for for years about how, you know, if there's a sibling fight in the morning, then if, you know, if we take, if we take an hour to do that in the morning, we process that together instead of doing the things we had planned, that's an accomplishment. And that might have taken all of your (laughs) energy for the day. Those kind of things take my energy. It really does that my energy. And so, but I also know it's super important. Um, That is a skill that they're not going to learn the first time or the second time or the 10th time or the hundredth time. This is, you know, a lifelong skill. And so to expect our kids to just be like, uh, this is how it's done. And we're going to move on to something else that it's, uh, it's not like the most effective way to learn that skill. And so to talk it through for an hour, whatever it is, I mean, it might not take that long, but, um, that is important. And it's okay to not have the expectations for it to be perfectly tied up in a bow at the end Mm -hmm. either. Um, And so I think it's really important for our kids to understand that it's not going to be a beautiful picture of uh, everybody getting along after this, but we have processed through it together and we're okay with, you know, the way it was. And so I think all those things are so important to just live through together. So, you um, know, when you say that, that though, it actually reminds me like if I'm b- being vulnerable with you, which I'm definitely going to do mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. that actually I get tired of that conflict. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. the truth. So, yes. you know, it's on repeat. You have yes. more kids than it's on repeat times, whatever that kid number is. Mm-hmm. So true. So true. And I think what happens, I mean, I think what parents tend to do, I know I do, is what I would like is for this to be done. (laughs) So I'm just going to end it for you all. And so that's what we tend to do. We just end it. And you know, what, what probably needs to happen is that our kids probably just need to feel hurt a little bit more. Um, And then oftentimes it can get dissipated. It either dissipates because they did feel here heard. And that's like, was like 90% of it. Um, sometimes, um, or it didn't get solved and that's okay too. Um, and 20 minutes, you'll get to do it again. Right. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. But that doesn't mean, you know, you want to run right back into math or a Uh science lesson or something. Sometimes just mentally, we are not there. Nothing productive is going to happen after a tough thing like that. We probably, maybe we need some time alone after that. Um, Maybe we need to talk one-on-one with somebody instead of just the whole family, or maybe we need to go run around for half an hour or something, you know, like, I mean, it's really what I want to communicate to my kids is listen to your body, your mind. Um, What is it telling you you need right now? Mm -hmm. And, and if you can get in touch with that kind of stuff, like just, I, I like the, and there's a term in Montessori um, called the normalized child. And I always think of that because I just think, are we, I mean, is my child in a normalized state? Am I? When that just kind of just means like, I'm ready to learn. I'm emotionally available. Um, I'm mostly happy, content, and um, I have energy to do the next task. And so um, if we're, if a child isn't normalized or if I'm not normalized, it's, it's not time to move on to something intense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is, that's really good. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, I know that. Too, so like when you're 
tired of hearing your kids fight. I mean, I think it's good to model for them too, that you're tired of hearing them fight. And so you're going to leave or whatever, you know, like it's good to say like, I'm really tired of this and I'm not going to participate in this argument. Mm -hmm. Oh, when you've given them the tools on repeat. Yeah. Then it's like, okay, so yeah, exactly. But you know, what's tricky sometimes is when you're with them all the time and they keep growing up in front of you (laughs) and you're engaging them more than anybody in your world, then you kind of expect them to adultify quicker than other parents. True. And if I'm honest, like, am I always engaging in arguments? Well, you know, even though I have the tools, Am I doing that well all the time? No, I'm not. Sometimes I'm cranky and I say things I shouldn't or, you know, whatever. And so like, I think it's also giving them, you know, a lot of room to like, just be imperfect. Well, and I, and I think I learned this from you, Angela, just watching you talk with your kids, but you are, you're really good at this. When a kid comes up to me and says, this kid somebody's doing this I'm mad and instead of like trying to solve the problem just saying oh that's tough I'm sorry that's really tough that's a tough situation yeah <laughs> I mean it just like I mean putting it back on them not because it's their 100% responsibility to take care of everything but um it you know it it should be it should feel empowering to them you know with with my help maybe I can help you with this but this is your relationship with your sibling mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or so your then how are you handling those those m- emotional or mental challenges when you've got that conflict because this is definitely a thing in the pandemic is that we have a lot more time with each other even yeah. in homeschool families so there's more of all that mm-hmm. friction and people don't have as much you know positive energy coming into the <laughs> home and so then how are you engaging it because like you said you're not at your normalized self and so it's taking all this energy how do you get back to that normalized self Ugh. I think That's Mark said this on one of our most recent podcasts, which really stuck with me, which is when your kids are requiring more of you, you need to take care of yourself more. Yeah. Um, you need to have that much more time to care for yourself. And so um, I think that is also really important to do for yourself and then to model for your kids. Mm, yes. You know, we, this, Okay, so in five years, we are going to look back and wonder how we did this. How did you survive this pandemic with kids at home all the time and not being able to go anywhere and whatever, being in each other's hair all the time? How did you survive that? So the thing is, like right now, you are surviving a really hard thing. And you probably don't even realize it because you've been doing it for a year now. It's just like feels normal. It feels a little boring. It feels tired. But this thing you are doing is hard, even though you are homeschooling, it is hard. Like it is different for homeschoolers too. It's Mm -hmm. we're grieving. We've lost a lot of things. We may have lost um, people. Mm -hmm. We may have had severed relationships. We may not have been able to see grandparents or friends. We may not have been in our favorite sport or been able to go to that class you wanted to go to or whatever. We are grieving loss Mm -hmm. of all sorts of things. And so I think it's really important to talk about that, that like these feelings that are coming up for me and my kids and my husband are all a normal result of this season, this really tough season. And so, you know, like we're all together all the time. That is a thing that we haven't had to, (laughs) you know, deal with before. And, um, yeah, to identify that is really good. Identifying really, that. Really and then like, important. sometimes I need more time alone. Sometimes yes. I yell. Sometimes I'm overwhelmed. Yes. Sometimes I cry. Same with my kids. You know, all of those reactions are like reactions to stress and grief. Yes. And so that is normal. Now, how can we help each other? Like, mm-hmm. how can we create, do more things that we enjoy? How can right. we get outside more? How can we get alone more, what, whatever it is we need, how can we help each other get those things that we need? That is such a good point. I was going to say too, like, we don't have, um, appointments anymore or, you know, places to go where we, we would normally get a break right. from even dealing with whatever emotion it is that I'm having at home right now, mm-hmm. where you can't be like, okay, you're going to soccer practice. We'll deal with this later. Yeah. We keep, we don't have that anymore. <laughs> and Um, so now we have to kind of be like, well, maybe we need to take an hour to 
play Minecraft or something. And that's okay. It's okay to go play Minecraft for an hour um, and come back when you are more regulated emotionally. That might be what the thing it is. Or, you know, go play with the dog or something, you know. Also, my husband and I have been working so hard at having dates with our kids. And sometimes they're just in the car <laughs> grabbing a, a, a special drink from Starbucks or something. Sometimes it's just going for a drive, honestly. Um, but that's what we, we have done that too, because I just think um, it's tricky with it, when you're homeschooling and it's the, t- the pandemic, we could all six of us in our family, we could all be together. 24 hours a day. (laughs) And, um, so we have to figure out how to, Angela, you talked about this in one of our last couple episodes, um, how we have, we have to, um, can it's, it's good to change the dynamics. Two people can go do something special together. And then the other people are at home and it just, it changes things up. It's like a vacation. (laughs) It's like a vacation from each other. Which, which we need sometimes. <laughs> yeah. I loved how you said this um, time together is not Pollyanna stuff. We are dealing with really mm-hmm. challenging stuff and amen. Yeah. It really yeah. is. And mm-hmm. if you're having a scenario, that's not exactly like what we're describing. We're with you. It's okay. Mm-hmm. We probably just haven't talked about it, but it absolutely is challenging this year on so many different levels that the dynamic has really shifted. You actually talked about how not to be bored. And I, I thought that is so interesting because it's just really encouraging us to go into that self-directed approach in our homeschools, but also for us as well as moms to say, okay, what about me? What, am, what are my needs in this mentally stimulating? And just like you said, alone time, which is like going to Hawaii, really. Um, it almost never happens and it's very costly to find, but um, how not to be bored. And I think you have to live your life on purpose. This whole year has really pulled mm-hmm. back all sorts of stuff that requires us to just own who we really are and what we really need. Right. right. And that might be different in the pandemic. Like we were just, Angela and I were just talking personally about how, uh, you know, we've always loved watching the Oscars together. And um, this year I've had a hard time even focusing on watching Oscar movies, which is not like me, but I think it's because like my attention span has changed and I, I'm watching now watching Marvel movies instead. And that's, I, that's just where I'm at <laughs> mentally right now. <laughs> I, need the action. Uh, I need the action or something. Yes. I need an escape or something. I don't know what it is, but anyway, um, it's different and it's good to recognize how things have changed right now too, for our kids as well. Mm-hmm. I wanted to watch all those Academy Award movies or because uh, I also love that. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, where are they? Like, oh, yeah. I don't even know where, where they released. What are they? So I found out after the fact or on the yeah. commercials, actually, yeah. <laughs> what they were. So I've got a list of them that I want to watch. But you I'm going to with- watch them because they're all most of them are really good. So really? you have watched them all? I've watched all the best pictures, except Ma- I watched half of Mank and then I pieced out on that one. Me too. Mank. But the other seven are really good. Okay. Well, that's the only one that I've watched half of. (laughs) So I I can see that we have so many things in so many directions we could chat about and Mm -hmm. only so much time. But right to close our interview, I want to ask each of you a few questions just to get to know you a little bit more. So tell me, what have you learned alongside your kids this week or a memory that you've created together? A good one. (laughs) A good good question. Um, should you want me to start? Go ahead, Maren. Okay. Well, we just, we pulled out our bird feeder, which um, wa- wasn't working. It's kind of a long story, but I have this bird feeder that's supposed to go out on our deck and hang there, but the hanger isn't working. So I finally just decided I'm putting it on my table, right? We're just putting it on a table on the deck because we want the birds to come. And so they started coming and we've been identifying birds all week and doing research and just enjoying them. Mm-hmm. It's so fun such a great fun thing to do in the spring yeah I'm with you but I think that's a sign that we're old now yeah (laughs) that was my grandma and grandpa's thing (laughs) I'm into all the old people things (laughs) (laughs) totally that's what happens how about you Angela okay I have a couple one is like super homeschooly and one isn't so I'm just gonna do both because I feel like I need a balance um my son and I are reading children of the blood and bone which oh, yeah. I don't know if you've read that. Is anybody, have you read that, Teresa? Yes. Okay. So this is like magic and adventure, which really? is not my kind of book. <laughs> it's just not. But 
wouldn't you know, it's really good. It's yeah. really good. And we're both kind of getting into it because he's, he also like, doesn't like change. He would read the same books over and over. He has been reading the same books over and over for years. He doesn't like to branch out. And so I'm pushing him to branch out. And it's also causing me to branch out because I've had to like pretend that I really want to read this book. And now that I'm a few <laughs> chapters in, I really love this book. And he's like, mom, I'm really getting into it. And I'm thinking, do I like, do I like fantasy? <laughs> You do now. This Have you read really Harry Potter? Because that happened to me too. I don't like yeah. that movie, but I'm like, that is a really good series. It's sort of on that vein. It's sort of it like is. Harry Potter, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Okay. I'll let my um, know. And then my other one is um, my family and I, we watched Parks and Rec the whole season, the whole series, <laughs> um, maybe like a year or two ago. And um, we just got Peacock so that we could um, watch them again. And then last night, my two of my kids and I watched an episode again and we just howled I mean it is <laughs> I was reminded like I I was like oh this is such a good memory I'm gonna remember us watching this together and yeah. now like is there anything better than a Parks and Rec, Rec episode to watch together I know I don't <laughs> I like I'm actually, I'm actually watching that with my girls but I like Parks and Rec is a different kind of funny it's like yeah, it is I don't know every 30 seconds there's something super funny to laugh at yeah. Yeah. Smart and funny. We love yeah, it. Smart funny. So we're like, we need exactly. to keep doing this. <laughs> that is awesome to find that with them. Absolutely. Yeah. So I got to know, and just for the benefit of everybody that's listening, Homeschool Unrefined, where did you get that title? And what does that mean for your homeschool community? Oh, that's such a good question. Angela, Do you, I'll, I'll start. You can help sure. me out though. Yeah. So we decided to use the word unrefined because it was, you know, it's a term that it kind of means before things have been quote unquote fixed or gotten better or, um, you know, gone through this process where the original part of it ha- is not there anymore. And so we kind of wanted to get down to basics um, and to like this natural state of learning mm-hmm. before anybody has come in and changed it for us or, you know, um, uh, I don't know, kind of made us think that we need to do things in a certain way. We just wanted to, we wanted to feel good about the way each individual person learns and does things. Um, I don't know. Is there that any? So good. Okay. Thank you. That was perfect. I like that. <laughs> We, we really like the word unrefined. We live, I don't know. I mean, it's a whole thing when you're fine, when you're trying to name your podcast, Mm -hmm. we wanted the name homeschool in it Mm -hmm. and wanted like something else to kind of convey what we were about. So, yeah. And we wanted, and we wanted to send that message to everyone. Like, don't worry about, this is why you're homeschooling. This is why we probably all decided to homeschool was to, um, change something, do something different than the way, you know, uh, a a traditional school would, would teach your kids. So like, make it your own, do your own thing, do the thing that, you know, especially, I mean, the parent, the, the parent who's homeschooling, we're all made so differently. We're all so different. And so like rock your strengths, do the thing that you're really good at and that you love to do. And your kids are going to see that and probably flourish because of who you are Mm -hmm. and and we want to send those messages to our kids too to feel good your discussion really does challenge that preconceived notions that people have about homeschooling and encourages them just to like you said embrace who you really are and what you're really all about it's a lot of fun and it's (laughs) real homeschool moms so y'all have to join in and and listen but i um, to close our interview i want to ask you what do you want to leave as a piece of advice for other homeschool moms I think my biggest thing is be yourself, like just be you, like Maren just said, Mm -hmm. what are you into? Show your kids that. Are you, do you like being home? Do you like getting out? Do you like reading? Do you like watching movies? What do you like? Do that because your kids need to see you being your authentic self. That's a great gift for them. Mm -hmm. Totally. I'd say Brown. Yeah. 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 I'd say the same thing. And then also like um, empower your kids to you know, to see that in themselves too. And for them to be able to verbalize what they need and um, like to do. Thank you so much for joining me today. I had so much fun and I can't wait to have you back. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much. And thank you for joining me today. 
I would love to learn more about who you are, so come on over to the Homeschool Mama support group on Facebook or the Homeschool Mama self-care Instagram page so we can support and encourage each other in our homeschool challenges. While you're there, you can check out the Book of Homeschool Encouragement, Homeschool Mama Self-Care, Nurturing the Nurturer. If you're a homeschool mama looking for extra support, know that I'm about to release the Homeschool Mama Retreat, and I'm hoping that it will bring that sense of energy and inspiration and encouragement that only a retreat, though virtually, can bring to you. So I'll keep you posted on that. Join the mailing list to learn more about that when it releases. You'll find the show notes and links to everything you've heard today on www.capturingthecharmlife.com. Please subscribe to this podcast and share a review because when you review the podcast, you help other homeschool mamas learn about homeschool mama self-care. Until next time. I wish you and your kids a charmed week. Unless you're having one of those weeks, then I hope you can turn all your homeschool challenges into your homeschool charms.